Hello. Well, some of us are having a little bit of trouble with our scroll work. And here was one of my instructions that I wrote out some time ago to show you on paper. But now let's do it physically. And um, I might give you some idea of how... Well, I think it's simple because us professionals always think things are simple. But of course, with learners, it's not because they haven't had the experience of seeing all this stuff. So here I go. Now, what I always think of is rhythm. So I'm doing just a simple wave. OK, you're going surfing. And that's what all this is around. This is around this. OK? Now, I haven't drawn it, shall we say, systematically, like on my instructions there with all these lines and things on. So I'm just doing it by hand, freehand, like I normally do. I normally sit with um, my pencil and paper on my lap while I'm watching television. But here we go. So now we are going from left to right, so the scrolls are going to turn in here. OK, so I'm working here. So I'm going to make my pathway around here. So I know the distance. So if I'm doing all my distances are around about here. So all my leaves to go in this roadway. So even if I miss this part, I can just still carry on because I'm following this line here, you see. And so that is how some scrolls are. Um, uh, constructed they'll go to the center so I'm leaving enough room to put leaves in so the same it goes again here on the other one I'll give you the, the idea is um, with the top one here I made shall we say an oblong and I cut the corners here see so it's halfway through or just three quarters of the way maybe less of course it's according to how much streamlining you want on the scroll so I still got my roadway running around here you see but the idea is because it's all done with this movement very angular you will find that you will get round better so once you've done that all you do then is you correct your line here. I don't work Procreate. Procreate does all this for you, but I'm not anti, but um, to become reliant on mechanical things, uh, to my mind, doesn't get, give you the same as working with pencil and paper, because you have to do a bit of thinking and you've got to do your own corrections, you see. Um, so I'm going back on this one. Now, because a lot of people are not draftsmen and thought of as draftsmen, so their pencils and whatever will go all over the place um, and wobble like that. You see, so I've got a wobble in there. I'll do one here. So I'm doing this type of thing and I'm finding my way around and I'm get, making mistakes here. But I don't use the, the eraser. So that's how I'm doing this. So I'll get a bit of what I call blue tack or it's putty rubbers and things like that uh, you get from art shops or this stuff is just sticking your Christmas cards on the wall and all that thing. So it's just this flick, uh, malleable stuff. So if I wanted to ghost this, I would rub that down so now I've got a ghost of that so I'm not worried about the other things I can follow the decent lines I've put in there and go around so I'm sitting at an angle on this here I'm drawing it larger than I normally would do so there you are and so I would correct that I think I've got it correct 
Oh, I'll give it another rub again. There's something, oh golly. There we go. So I'll rub a bit down and it will take some of that other stuff out and then I can correct again if I want to, you see. So that is how a lot of artists uh, work, you see. So you don't have to erase your thought lines. So now that is the rhythm we're going to work with, right? Now, I explained it to one of my, somebody that asked a few questions. I said, what type of scrolls are you after? What type of work do you do, you see? So on this one, this is like the English scroll, like I was taught with gun engraving. But then this one has leaves coming out in a different way. So this is the more popular way. Um, this may be like Weldon. Uh, he, he engraves like this, you see. He does a, like an English girl, but more open in the Nemschka style. Now, Nemschka is um, of Austrian, um, born in Austria and worked in the same technique, the Germanic technique, you see. So now I've got this movement here. This is ideal in some respects for learner engravers. You see, you come along here, you touch the line. If you're going to cut away the background, you see, um, you may feel that there's, all, uh, there's not a lot of space here. But, of course, when you cut away the background, this negative here becomes wider in the eye you see so there's a lot of space so if you actually make a leaf too long and, and too much space it becomes off balance to my mind and to lots of the sculptors of the past of all their stuff so you work up the ladder this is still reiterating some of my other lessons i've taught so you do this so you work it around here Travis is one of the people that asked me a few questions. So now we have this, and we're working around like so, you see. And there are ways of altering and doing things slightly. You can, this is maybe a bit too advanced, bring this one around here just to make a little bit of interest. And this is all done with a little, shall we say, knob style endings of the leaf and now I'll put another one in here but that's coming underneath so it looks as though it's coming from the other side as though this has got more form all right and so we're doing this movement here now of course this would have been cut your backbone would have been cut first with a, not a terrific amount of depth but sometimes you, you might need this according to what you're working on. If you're working on delicate jewellery or something fine, you, you don't need to go too heavy on it. Um, if you're working on Western revolvers like the world and is, and people want to see it across the field, <laughs> across the range or whatever it is, you, you, you put some more into it. See, it's, it's according to the wide open spaces you work from, you see. If you've got somebody that's sitting down and he's cleaning his guns and he's got his little magnifying glass out and uh, he's a bit of a connoisseur or engraving, that's who you work for when you're doing the finer stuff, you see, the Bellino. But the average person, I wonder how many people actually look. They see it as being pretty and that because they're not educated like engravers are that see it every day and uh, most of the top quality professionals see every little nuance um, shall we say it's like being on a panel of anything you know where you're going to exhibit your work and you're going in for competition the 
professionals always see those little things that the average person won't see. So I'm doing this, you see, so you can see how it's built up. Uh-huh. So there we go. And of course you've got to cut this away neatly. Always work neatly. But this, as I mentioned, is just a pencil drawing of how you can construct your scroll, you see, so it's going this way, and as I have mentioned quite a few times, I do, but of course there's always new people coming on, and we must always cater for those that haven't seen anything before. So I don't really have to apologise this again so and then we have an extra uh, an open space like this you see how do we fill that well you can fill it with another little scroll like this or you can do a cut like so and another one like so again and of course you've got this little bit here and then you would start here again and do that and of course you're going to fill a little leaf in there you see so now again there are all these little C cuts and little S shapes, like so. That gives you this little formation. Then you will shade this down here. Of course, I will shade this way down into whatever it is. You see, like so. It's not giving you a very precise. But it's giving you the idea for how we will shade in. So I will shade here. Now, the majority of people will do all this and go off the edge. Different styles, different things. And um, different grapers, of course. It's your tools. I've noticed, really, there's a variety of different tools that people are working with. Things that I never worked with. And I see them now. And uh, there, there you are, you see. You still learn because of seeing things that you never saw in the past. And um, there we go. So now again, if I wanted to do the other style like this, I could put another scroll in here. And as you notice, I'm not being too precise because this is just a demonstration. And us guys have always got to have an excuse. Right, so I'm doing this. Okay, and we've got another one here, and that. So now again, you can do another. This is more like some of the chisel work that some of the Austrians do. This is very small, and that we all have our different approach to scroll. And the Austrians classify their scroll as English scroll, it's their interpretation. But by their method in the past, not so much now, well, he still does it now, they used the hammer and chisel more. And because you're using a hammer and chisel, sometimes you get more depth. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, that was their technique. Um, very similar to wood carving. You can see it in the wood carving, it's, it's done the same way. So to reconstruct a very fine English scroll into wood carving, well, it, it wouldn't actually work. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be lost because it'd be so small, you see. So that's how things... This is just my way of thinking. Contradict me, please, if you find that I'm saying a lot of rubbish. OK, here we go again. Okay. So I'm doing this one again. There, you see? Now I'm walking up the ladder again. I keep on talking about the ladder. I could close this one in here. Maybe not touch that, but this one will. So that will give another little I, I, um, idea. I'll do another one here. You see where I start there? I don't start from the back. I don't come on the backbone here because I'm leaving this stem all the way around the edge. Okay. So we're working again like that. And I'm doing that. 
that movement. And of course, when you're doing and you're practicing, you will start like this. You can see how fast I'm doing this with no precision. But after a while, you, with um, plenty of time and experience, you will take your time on it and um, end up with a really nice drawing. That's what we all aim for. Uh, but um, it's just that I see some people struggling. And the advice is, buy this book, buy that book, buy this book, and that person's doing it. It's okay, but you can't run out and get it if you're on here. So just press the button, and I'm here to show you a way. Of course, it's not in front of you on a piece of, or a page or something like that you can keep on looking at. But... Um, with this modern world, I suppose. It gives you an idea, in any case, if you can't go out or there's no bookshops near you or you find that you can't get a copy. And, of course, some of it's rather quite expensive. You set up a whole thing. You've only just started. And are you going to invest in a lot until you've got a little bit of confidence in thinking oh I'm going to, still going to go ahead with it so this is how you work so this is how I mentioned try to get your confidence in your drawings and do that okay I'll leave you for now